the Sunderland is one of the most legendary planes of the war. I just thought I must have one of these planes. I mean, they were just so terrific. I thought, well, you know, I'll come back to England in one of these things, and I will have something that no one else has got. You know, they might have a vintage Bentley, but I've actually got a Sunderland. In 1979, my friend Edward Halton bought a derelict 1930s flying boat. Since then, he has spent over a million pounds of his inheritance restoring the aircraft. It has dominated his life for more than 12 years. My ex-wife um, was very interested in it at first and then turned very much against it, and especially against the expenditure, and tried to match the expenditure of the flying boat by being incredibly extravagant. After divorcing, Edward remarried and started a new life with Caroline. I think Caroline doesn't like aeroplanes anyhow doesn't like machinery. I look at it, although it's Edwards, I still look at it as though it's a thousand miles away from me because it, I just can't bring it into my world or my way of thinking. Yes. So yeah, they finish that, that wing entirely, have they? Yeah. All they have to do is put the aileron, you know, kind of flip it. What's the aileron? It changes the direction. He's spending far, far, far too much money. He behaves to the world as though he still had the same amount of money as when he started off. And um, I, for one, certainly don't want to be poor. And I think if he goes on spending money at the same rate, we certainly will be quite soon. I just feel it's a waste of his character. I think he's so much more intelligent than spending his time tinkering with an old toy. The restoration has been overwhelmed by problems. In 1987, a wing was badly damaged in the hurricane which swept southern England. It has taken two years to repair. Oops, you guys, then. More money than I could have dreamt has been spent on this plane now. The only thing that has made it possible is the fact that other people have been prepared to work on it. And, you know, they've obviously been paid, most of them, some of them have been volunteers, but it has inspired the devotion and excitement in other people. It's about there, isn't it? Yeah, it's about there, actually, yeah, it's really. It's ideal, really, Peter. Yeah. After you've fallen off the wing once or twice and that sort of thing, or <laughs> fallen in going aboard, then you realise it's a boat. It's a flying boat, <laughs> which is a type of aircraft. Yeah. yeah. What is it, Alan? It's a plane. <laughs> it's got wings, it's a plane. Simple as that. All right. All right. Well, yeah. That's good. We'll work a lot of hours because, uh, well, mainly to sort of ourselves with travelling back home and travel back yeah. home every two weeks. So we usually start about half, half past seven in the morning and uh, we'll wait till about half past ten at night. Mm -hmm. My grandfather, um, he, he actually was actually quite a sort of famous figure and had a very large stud of racehorses. I think he had a hundred racehorses. You know, I wouldn't like to spend 12 months a year in South of Grande. I'd be very happy to spend two months a year there. But I don't think that's the problem. The problem is where to live. It's not some... Yeah. Well, then you'll want to live here. That's fine with him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's... My mother's the daughter of a Russian um, emigre. They um, lost all their money in the revolution. My father was very kind, but very weak. And my mother took the role of a father, really. Um, I think I was the youngest boy boarder at six, which was rather frightening. We were very rich in those days. Um, I mean, we'd had a lot of chauffeurs and big cars, and when I was eight, I had TB, and I had to go to a sanatorium in Switzerland for quite a few years, and I had a governess and a nurse, and um, I was really treated a bit like a little king. But it was very lonely because I never saw any other children. I spent a lot of my time just looking over the balcony and I had a Meccano set I was very proud of. He won't eat his lunch today. He's not very hungry. Huh? He's not very hungry, the pig. My father was Sir Edward Halton, who's, um, we had Halton Press, which, um, notably had Picture Post and other magazines, children's magazines like The Eagle. I mean, one of the great things were these of cut-out 
engineering drawings of aeroplanes and boats and trains and things. And in fact, there's one of one of a flying boat. Um, here you see all the different cabins and compartments, and there were even beds in them. And um, they they were just a very enjoyable way of flying all these long distances. And you see, these seats are um that that was yeah. this. Those are the original ones. We're just covered in, mm. in you know, the different cloth. And the idea is to, um, there's a bar, that's the bar, you see, and there's, there's the rope, you see. So if, if there's an accident, you would, you would um, pull this off, undo that rope, climb out of that window. Here you see one somewhere, it must have, that must be somewhere in the Far East or the Middle East, um, taking off from the harbour. It's very exciting taking off. Water goes all over the lower windows and you get an enormous amount of spray and noise and then it slowly lifts off the water. I was hoping really to fly the plane in places like Egypt and down the Nile and Kenya. I think it's in a way a rather tame place to run something like this in England. England and I imagine Holland and Belgium and France, they are bourgeois, everything is super regulated and super efficient by bureaucrats and efficient businessmen. People leave, lead cosseted lives. Um, Wait, so do you. I, I also lead a cosseted life, but I don't... I, I have a very, very, very insecure life. I, I'm spending a lot of money on a very difficult aeroplane. I, I'm not a chap who's got a job. I don't have a, a regular source of income. I'm spending my capital on something which is very, very difficult to, to kind of keep going. Pete is a very highly strung person who's totally devoted to the aeroplane. And his knowledge is really invaluable because he's taught himself all about how the engineering works. And he's also done a lot of the calculations He really doesn't have any family ties at all, so um, his tie is really the aeroplane. I mean, he's, he's moved everywhere the plane's gone. I, I think it is better kept as a preserved historic aircraft and just flown occasionally. We, would, we both have the aim of seeing aircraft flying successfully, so uh, uh, as we both want that, then there's, there's no difficulty in us both working towards that aim. But I, just I would rather see it used in a different way to the, to the way he's keen to see it used. So. What way is that? Well, he, he hopes to, to see it in commercial use. He hopes to see it carrying regular passengers, which would be a wonderful thing to see. I agree with him, but I just don't think it's a, a practical proposition. I think I worked it out about 200 man days for, for other work for ourselves. I don't think he appreciates the commercial value of the aeroplane. Yeah. Um, I think possibly because he's a rather left wing and um, rather likes this kind of club, boys' club atmosphere. <laughs> he surrounds the whole thing with his own friends and rejects people who aren't his immediate friends. And you know, I don't feel very welcome on my own property. You know. That's the real problem. Well, obviously, it's been an extremely difficult situation for him. It's uh, been money going out all the time and, and no, no returns coming back. It can't continue like that forever. He has to find some way of getting a return for his money from the aircraft. Hi, hello, how are you, actually? Um, gosh, what I was ringing up about is that I, you've probably heard quite a lot about this business of it, the plane going to Ireland. Um, what's happened is that there's, um, they're sending a lot of stuff to Chatham to try and, people to try and kind of accelerate things. Edward's troubles seemed to be at an end when he came to a leasing agreement with the Irish airline Ryanair. Although the plane hadn't flown since it was damaged two years ago, 
Ryanair now insisted that it should be ready to fly to Ireland in two weeks' time for the opening of a new museum in Foynes. Uh, the chap arrived one day and said, that's rather slow, isn't it? He said, how do you mean? I said, Edward told me a day or two ago to just proceed on at the rate we're going. He said, well, it's nothing to do with Edward anymore. He said, it's our aeroplane, not his. <laughs> so <laughs> that was the first I knew of it. Did Edward come down? Uh, I, I, not till several days after I'd been told this by others. <laughs> Mm. It's Edward, he can never, he never tells you anything, I mean, he never, like this, apparently this, this new company had taken over and he never had a word with us at all about, you know, whether we're still employed or anything, so, nothing was ever said to us, you know, about the new management or whatever, a real strange, strange setup. That's another five years bad luck, they tell us, to change the name of the ship. We've changed it about, Edward's changed it about four times now, and every time it's brought him a year or two of bad luck, so it looks like another year or two of bad luck, doesn't it? Yeah, what happened last time you changed the name? Um, well, as you got blown over in a, in a hurricane. The time before it had two engines fail, so I don't know what it'll be this time. Something different, I imagine. Um, I mean, I think I think a lot of the stuff could be actually carried over on the plane. I mean, it's much more convenient than the yeah. baggage area. And, um... All of this, I think, would hinge about around how long before you're going to have uh, workshops, stores, office, and so on exactly. in, in Ireland. And, and yeah. I don't know what's happening there. I haven't a clue. Uh, I don't think you do either, do you? I mean, you've got all your manuals, etc., which you need to refer to, your technical records which have to be kept up, apart from workshop facilities. And, and I mean, in my mind, we should know this before we go, not <laughs> get there, sit there bobbing around on, on the water while such things are being made up. the only country with weird eccentrics who are prepared to sort of take up challenges. As, although a lot of yuppies and boring kind of conservative people, there's always a few kind of wild guys who have, you know, made their cars into kind of mini Rolls Royces or sort of brought a London taxi and made it into a kind of, into a pickup truck at the back. You know, there's some very odd kind of characters who could sort of respond to challenges and to sort of strange sports and things. And they're not cowards like the French, you know, who's are only interested in food and, and clothes and looking smart and carrying little handbags and things. I mean, uh, English people are pretty, a pretty weird bunch, actually. Mm. Uh, hello. Evening, Edward. How's it all going, actually? It's looking good, yes. The wind's not too bad. No, it We've got seems a team of army chaps here no to good. man a steady in line. Seems as the wind must have died down quite a oh, bit. Oh, it's been very, it? very strong all day. Yeah, yeah. it's dried out. In. I was worried because the forecast forecast, uh, you know, strong winds this evening. Apparently, Pete so, Smith so thinks it's quite safe to launch it at night, but I don't. Obviously, it's not something you you want to do. One wouldn't do it unless one had a, an urgent need to get the plane in the water. People say that it's, you know, when it's on its beaching gear on land, it's like um, a man on crutches. You know, it's, well, it's obviously much more on its element on water. You can't get onto it except by going on a dinghy or on a motor launch.
problem is. Although I'm very much in favour of it going for the festival, it's a pity that everything's been done at the last minute and there's been an atmosphere of tension added to the general tension you have when you, when you go off on a journey. I mean, that's, that's really what it is. And obviously one's terrified that one's forgotten something and one's left things unturned. Mark just said it'll probably get there on three engines. Well, I think he's just being a bit sort of... I mean, obviously, the, the engines seem fine. I mean, the one that's giving trouble now, well, I hope that they can solve that, but... Well, of course, if, that, if it did, we did have an engine failure in flight, it would have to turn back. Um... <coughs> Once it's, it's ready, which won't be long now, I think it'll be safer than a 747, don't you? Do. you? I think so. <laughs> I'd rather fly in that than one of these jets. Yeah. Really? I think so, yeah. Uh, uh, he, he gets into trouble if he tries flying out, so I guess he gets caught in the wind and he can't see. He's had a couple of nasty accidents. He's landed in the river one day and another day he, uh, he flew into the ground and hurt himself. Don't you? You can't see what you're doing. The old wind catches you and blows you around, yes. Oh, where are you going? Where are you going? All right, you want to go on my shoulder? Go on. What have you done? Well, it's just a form for the custom, so we get drawback back on the fuel, is it? But I, it's just disappeared, it's this whole file with the, um... I better ring up June and see if she's going to Such a kind of incredible rush all the time. One just can't. Um... See, if we could have lived in Kent, we wouldn't have had this rush every time. You know, once I've actually spent more time going to and from um, there than I have actually sort of been doing any work. You know, that's what's so depressing out the whole business. <sighs> well, you lived in France before. I know. Well, that was even well. It didn't matter. I mean, you know, it's, well, that's true. Actually. Caroline, actually, I always thought Caroline was a very quiet girl. Do you remember when the first trips to, to Chatham were? Caroline was very quiet all the time. She'd just sit on the grass and not talk. And well, I don't like talking all the time. She were much quieter then than you are now, okay? Was it because you were a bit shy? I didn't talk very much, or was it? I am terribly shy, actually. Still. Really? Mm -hmm. No, I'm not actually shy as I was. No. I stopped being dreadfully well, shy. Well, you quite... Do you remember that first... Well, weekend when Emma was there and we all had lunch. I, didn't, I with, just didn't want to talk about aeroplanes. When Applegolf flew the plane, actually, do you remember that? Well, that was exciting, flying the actual plane, yes. but to talk about aeroplanes. I don't, I just don't find it exciting. Well, here I was at 3,000 feet, all that kind oh. of talk. It looked dark. Well, I was the only head boy who was never made a prefect, and there was always some kind of scandal or trouble. They always, they wanted me to be. Look at that motorbike, he's already crashed like this for nearly three times, isn't it? And um, I was just pushing some dinky toy along the playground, you know, and I was you know, meant to be too old for that. And the, the, the Mr. Allen went up and said, huh, how, do you, how, how can we claim to be a great school when our head boy stoops so low? Getting um, some maps in case we have to sort of land in an emergency. You know. So that's, that's Pool Harbour. Actually, that would be fine, actually. That... And you haven't got water foot or anything like that, have you? Um, could you order one from... I can order one, sir. It would take some time Probably to get there. A week? Yeah. It takes a week to get across London, now, isn't it? Well, they only deliver once a week. Oh. Shall we just do a taxiing test up here? We can do that. So, so we at least, we, as we're all here, yes, um, we can do that, yeah. that would at least give us some idea that the engine was all yes, right. Yes, yes. We'll certainly do a taxi test. We, we may do a, a C of A test. Ken Emmett is one of the few pilots who is qualified to fly the Sunderland. He has not flown the aircraft for over two years. To check that everything is in working order, he is taking it out for taxi trials on the Medway. I love it when it goes really fast, actually. It's really exciting. This is what it's like. 
landing when you land. Oh, wow, it's amazing. Isn't it? <laughs> what do you think of that? I think it's wonderful. Oh, shit, <laughs> God. It is getting silly. Yeah, I know. What a shame. Is it dripping from the little one? Oh, I can't see this. I can't. One of the engines is still causing problems. There is a very bad oil leak which must be fixed before the aircraft can leave for Ireland. It's, a, it's an amazing project, really. Yeah. For one man to do it, it's unbelievable. That's why I hope it flies. It'll prove a lot of people wrong. I'm going over because I get involved with any million things. Can we have a look at the map and all that, or shall we? No, I haven't, want to go I haven't got it here. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All the others haven't been here, presumably, have they? Um, they haven't been here. Yeah. So Mike and... Um, yeah, and Jeff and, and... Yeah. OK. Cheerio. What's happening, Edward? No, I haven't a clue. No, he hasn't told me anything. Do you want to stand by next week when, you, when you've gone? Yeah, you so got it. Better help. Well, well, I'll come in if you What, we'll be back, will we? I don't know. It's too dark. You must key or lock up or do something. Yeah. Yep. So why are you going home? Yeah. Well, I'm only going to the Why? Because I don't think I can face seeing you go tonight. Because I don't think I can handle it. No, so I might no. just drive Mercury back tonight. Oh, no. Yeah, well, I, 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 don't, going to... I don't think I can handle it. So how do we know it's going to go off any time? I'm going with it to Ireland. As far as I know. Oh, of course it'll fly. I've got faith in the old girl. We've all got faith in her. I wish you'd sort of kept guinea pigs. <laughs> what? I'd rather we should have kept guinea pigs or something. Oh. I mean, it actually comes down to the crunch. We don't need handlers. You don't need fending off in a flying boat. It's what they thought it was. Anyway, that's all, by the way. We're taking four people only. Yeah. What are you worried about, Caroline? Going to the Pizza Mare on the Fulham Road for the rest of my life with Ned, you know. I have this awful vision of me going to the Pizza Mare alone. It's really stupid. Is there anyone else going aboard? You know, they were going to do quite intensive tests before it fly, and now it's just done one test. So, of course, I'm slightly worried about Edward going up in it. I've never really regretted doing this. I mean, this is a very exotic, exciting and romantic, wonderful thing. A lot of people do want to be different, and I think my, my wishing to be so in such an extravagant way has really very much been my undoing. I mean, I've spent a sort of very large amount of my capital, and irretrievably so in pursuing something that I'm not really capable of carrying out. The deal with Ryanair fell through. 
A week later, the aircraft flew back to England. Its future was still uncertain. <laughs>